it's Sin City. It's murderers, killers, uh, prostitutes, drugs, corrupt, corruption. Every, every, everything's just fucked up. Down. And it's a network. It's a network. It's a business. It's a... Okay. For a female on Skid Row, homeless, it's like in an addiction, it's, it's cold. She must become cold hearted for the simple fact, the streets don't love nobody, point blank. And at the end of the day, love will get you nowhere. Love will get you fucked up, fucked over and killed. Uh, for a female, she has to become more cold hearted than, a, than the average man. She is up against more. She is like the weakest link, sort, sort, you know, sort of kind of to say. But at the end of the day, when any animal back is to the wall, you never know what you're gonna do or what you can do until that moment comes. So it's like being, a, being preyed on, being amongst savages, hooligans, killers. So uh, for instance, say you work the street, you in an addiction, Rule number one, never let the trick or the customer or the client know that you have an addiction, even if he has an addiction. Because at, at the end of the day, his financial stability is far more well off than yours, unless you are a woman that works the streets and have a pimp or a daddy or a sugar daddy. So then it weighs out pretty much the same. But anyway, you would never want to let them know for the simple fact uh, their demeanor, their, 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 their judgment, their overall, what they think and how they're going to, uh, break you down, fuck you over, just, uh, have their way with you. Uh, nine times out of 10, uh, men seem to think, and, and it's been proven that when a woman is in an addiction, depending on the mentality and the mind frame she has, if she's a, a spineless woman, then she can just be tossed around in ways to where she's out having sex for just uh, pulls on pipes, uh, 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 empty syringes, if that's her, her drug of choice. Uh, we'll, we'll go all out. I mean, uh, we'll not even use condoms, depending on the way her mentality is and her addiction. And you have a lot of men that prey on that. And you have women that, that they kind of like have it to where if you don't fuck over me or if you don't fuck me around, then you don't care anything about me. So that's the way they want to be treated. And you, you have men that when they know that you want to be treated that way, then they don't want to spend time with you. They want some, some fresh shit, some, somebody they can, they can break down, that they can tear up, that they could just run through the ground. And, and that's where a lot of people's heads is out here. If they, they only have three motives and it's either to help you, to hinder you, or to tear you down. Am I, am I, okay. So let's speak from my eye point of view. Let me share some of my experience. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I was a woman of the street. Um, I tried not to word it so sashy that I was a hoe or a hooker. I like to call it a, a actor. Uh, a performer. You give me the script, meaning you tell me what you want me to do, you tell me how much, and then uh, I'll, maybe I'll agree, depending on if the price is right. So, here we go. Uh, this is where I came to know that all money is not good money. Let's just say I really wanted a fix, right? And there has been times I really wanted a fix where I went against my limits and my boundaries. And uh, I've stooped to some lower arrows. I'm not perfect, you know, the less I've ever done anything sexual for it, and I'm free from it. So I can let you know, I don't give a fuck what you do with it when you're done, when I'm done telling you. So the lowest I've accepted to do anything is about 20 bucks. Um, I have done half and half for 20 bucks. I mean, it is what it is. It didn't last long, but I've done it. You know, I've, I mean, all that shit about what people don't do and they're not fucking and they're not stuck in. An addiction gonna make you do some shit. Flat out point blank. I've, uh, 
I've, I've, I've gotten dates that wanted guys, you know, after I done dated them and it's like, what the, f you know, and it's like, I immediately run to go be tested. You know, shit goes down out here to where you jeopardize. I mean, you, you, ha you have to go hard in the pain or you have to be numb or you have to be with it or don't fuck around at all. Because all that saying, what you ain't gonna do, what you won't do, you're gonna do it. I mean, I've, I've witnessed men having sex with other men. And I mean, like I said, I've, I've, I've dated a man and then maybe two days later, he comes back and he, he's asking me, hey, I want your homeboy. And it's like, whoa. Like I said, immediately I go get tested. I've got some gangster homies out here to where when they go grind, it's like, hey, watch my back. I'm about to, you know, run up at homeboy real quick you know, between me and you. And it's like, whoa, it's like, these are some of my niggas, my Ace Cancuns. And it's like, it's, it'll fuck up your head. I mean, it fucks with your head because it's like, wow, my nigga, for real? Is that what it's coming down to? Yes, it comes down to everything. As far as having sex outside, I've done that. I've done it right before uh, mid, uh, how do you say? Mid morning, you know, in between cars, I mean, Man, you, you, Skid Row is just, it's going to take you some places. You're going to do some shit. I mean, it's so fucked up now to where the price of pussy is the lowest thing on the market. Ass and drugs sell more than, than pussy. And that's, <laughs> that's like really sad. Uh, you got more men that's getting picked up on the whole stroll than you have women getting picked up. You've got... <laughs> if, 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 man, it's just, it's crazy, but it's, it's real life. It's some real life shit. I mean, you've got some people out here that look like they're as sweet and as hum as can be, but they're stone cold killers. You know, um, I, again, speaking from my odd point of view, uh, knew Chester, the, the figure roar killer. I had gotten high with this man numerous of times, went to sleep around this man, and to find out uh, maybe two, two, two years after the fact that he had killed 12 women on Figueroa. And you want to talk about sick to your stomach, you want to talk about scared, you want to talk about uh, being traumatized? Well, imagine getting loaded with somebody that has mayhemed women, you know, uh, cold-heartedly, you know, I guess I'm destined to be here. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, you want to talk about some corrupt cops? You got cops out here, and I've ran across a couple of them uh, that's out here uh, forcing women to have sex. <laughs> if you've never been to prison before and, and you don't want to go, you're going to do whatever they tell you to do. Everything goes in skid row. Uh, you just never say what you won't do and, 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 and what you can't do as far as overcoming, outpowering, surviving. Uh, once again, you never know what you'll do when your back is to the wall. Agatha Street. Agatha from San Pedro, I'll say approximately, to Merchant. From 7th, let's just say maybe to about 12th Street. Billion dollar business for the women, the men, the punks, the genders. Billion dollar business, easy to be made. Uh, when I first came to, to Skid Row's part, oh, and I'm gonna put it like this, Figure Roar is the, 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 the strip and It's a, it's a business, but Agatha, it's been statistically proven was truly uh, for the women, that men, anybody that sold ass, uh, prostituted, whatever you want to call it, however you want to word it, was a billion dollar business. When I first, when I used to work off a of fig, I'd say I make $90 the most a day. And it would take, 
I would probably start from maybe 11 at night. I probably wasn't done until about four. And I had a quarter. My, my, I would try to at least make $600 from 11, and I try to stop right before daybreak. I'd say about four, 5.30 the latest. I would somewhat meet that quarter, or sometimes go over, you know. Uh, with Agatha, oh my God, I was so addicted to the money. Uh, I was so addicted to the money because there was a time where I could turn three dates and I would make $500, easy. I got so addicted to the money to where as soon as day, nightfall hit, it was time for me to go to work. And I tell you, right before sunup, I'm easily in a motel room or at the dope house. The motel room, of course, I didn't pay for. It would be the last uh, uh, client or whatever. And back then, they can leave you in the room. Today, that's out. When they go, you go. <laughs> but I would be waddling in this bed with all my, my you know, my, my earnings, and I would be like, wow, this shit is crazy. And I'm gonna tell you what, what motel they were into going to. It was the Cecil down here, it was the Huntington, it was uh, the Continental, it was the Ford at one time. That's if they were like really, really like cheapskates, but the Cecil and uh, the Huntington, those, those were the days. I mean, man, I mean, you had everything you needed up in there, especially if you got one and he was an addict, you take him to one of the motels that's got the drugs, you got the drink there. You didn't have to go nowhere. He didn't have to go nowhere. I mean, he would easily, I mean, they were so trustworthy, clients were so trustworthy to the women back then. They'd give you the card, they'd give you the keys to the car. You know, as long as they were satisfied with they're uh, content with their addiction and you flamingled them or, or mesmerized them however you did or you took care of business, easy, easy, easy peasy. What I did learn is that it is sick, as sick as it may sound, you got, but of course again, be mindful, this is skid row. You've actually got people out here that want you to fuck over them to take them for everything they've got. As sick as it sounds, if you're not with that, you're not pleasing them. They've gotta go. And it's like, what the, what? I, I, in fact, I tell you right now, that's one of the, the hottest things on the market today is skid row. Fuck me, fuck over me, or I don't wanna deal with you. It's like, I'm gonna give you my card. I've got my whole life savings on it. And uh, you're gonna go and you're gonna get such and such off. Nine times out of 10 with technology, the person has uh, uh, any time alert or you know the account is activated to the phone today. So it's like, they're just dying waiting there. I mean, they're probably gonna get off just waiting on, on you to just pull out a little bit more than you're supposed to pull out. The minute you don't do that and you come back through the door, I've seen some of the most dumbfounded or angry fucking looks like, you didn't fuck over me. I'm, 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 oh, I got I to gotta call, I got to go. And it's like, I started seeing more and more and more of this. It's like, I've done everything this guy asked me to do. I didn't take down his money. I brought him. It's like, where did I go wrong? And I started getting it from various people. And then, you didn't fuck him. I'm like, what do you mean I didn't fuck him? You didn't fuck him. I'm like, well, he fucked me. I, I let, you know, I did what I was supposed to do. And it's like, no, you're missing the point. You didn't fuck over him. You didn't fuck him around. You're a square to them. They want no dealings with you. You see him again and they're with the most scandalous scallywag out here, right? And it's her M.O. And then you can see it in her eyes. I'm gonna fuck you and I'm gonna fuck you good. It's written all over her face. And it's like, you're just who I've been looking for. And it is like, that's some way out shit, but that's one of the, 
<laughs> as crazy as it may sound. That's one of the businesses out here at Skid Row. It's like you have guys that go and get these women because they're some of the good fuckovers out here, right? And it's like, I remember one of the guys coming to get me and he goes, check this out. He's got a waku of money. Get him. I didn't know what get him meant back then. I thought it meant do your thing, treat him right. He's going to take care of you. No, get him means get his ass. He, he wants you to get it all. But the way he wants you to get it is betrayal, deceit, connive, manipulation. That's what turns him on. That's what gets him off. <laughs> it's sick. It's insane. But if you don't fuck him around, they ain't fucking with you. Like I said, it was a billion dollar business. I, I mean, man, everybody got paid out there from the uh, incognito the gangsters selling ass or fucking ass to where the transgender, everybody made money. And I'm not talking about no two, no $300. Came daybreak in my circle, we all counting guap, guap. Guaps. Nine times out of ten, we done been kicked down with the party pack of drugs. We've got every type of drug that there is. We've got all type of liquor that there is. We've got guap. We've got wardrobe. I mean, now, as of today, you lucky. <laughs> and God forgive me when I say this. The tongue is very powerful. You lucky if on a date you make $20. And don't get me wrong, I just was, was, was out living out here recently homeless, but that's neither here nor there. You lucky if you even make $20, unless you're with that new business. Fuck me around, fuck me over, or I want nothing to do with it. Would want nothing to do with you. That right there is the most money making business right here to where it's like and it's like whoa what the fuck is going on here all that do me right treat me right and i got you i'm going to take care of you i'll give you my number type shit i'm going to look for you you no fuck me over fuck me around or i never want to see you again and when i see you i'm going to zoom by you that's the type type that's the business that's now on agatha Let's just say you just got off the Greyhound station and uh, you're, 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 you're vulnerable, you're gullible. They can, you got people that, that's their specialty. They sniff you out, gullible. Radar, do, 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 do. Vulnerable, do, 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 do. Naive, do, 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 do. A quick turnout, a quick whatever. All it takes is for you to smile and they got you. Because if they can make you smile, you trust them. You feel comfortable with them. And on that, the game begins. Some say as far as, oh, I got my car parked down here. Why don't you come walk with me? I'll take you to where you need to go. In fact, that's why I was here. I'm going that way. But you know what? I decide I don't want to take the train. We could take that ride together. You know, we could stop, get something to eat, whatever, whatever. I want to stop and see one of my family members. Maybe you could stop and see. And it's like they sell you this fucking dream. They, that someone that does not know that is so innocent, so pure, so naive to, to, to people's motives and everything. It's like, okay, sounds great. And yada, yada, yada. So here you go, thinking that they're coming to get the car and Lord, because, oh, here comes procrastinations, distractions, diversions. So now time is going. So now you might begin to wonder, but then, oh, here comes somebody to make you feel good. Oh, this is my friend. This is my sister. This is my yada, yada, yada. This is my folks. Uh, I got to run and take a, run a tight errand. Sit right here with them and I'll be right back. You know, and then it's like, before you know it, you're being introduced. You've already been curious, probably. You've already kind of seen and wondered, because everybody has a curious and wonder, and nobody's really naive to what goes on in the world unless you're just totally secluded. So here you are, sitting around on Skid Row, where there is 
this is drug land. This is, this is Sin City, where any of your, your darest things that you've ever wanted to do, yay, it's my chance to do it and nobody will ever know. Uh, that's out. Now you're sold. Now you're owned. Now you're stuck. Now you're sprung. And now you're turned the fuck out. You don't even get a moment of clarity to say, where the hell did I go wrong? How did I get here? You know why? Because you're so caught up into the rapture, you're consumed, you're devoured. Now you're a part of Skid Row's product. You're a Skid Row product, meaning everything must go. You must do any and everything to what now? Survive, unless you still got still got just a little piece of sanity and you're not too torn down or traumatic or all shot out or all turned out to where you got a little piece to where you can somewhat break away and try to make a phone call or try to reach out for help. But nine times out of 10, whoever got you out, that's out. You will talk to nobody. You will never be alone. You're mine. I own you. You know, it's, I've, 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 I've seen some of the youngest, some of the, some of the most, how do you say, thinking that they're hurting their parents or it's their chance to prove a point or get back or I'm 18 now and I'm going to do what I want and I'm going to live freely to where it's like, are you fucking nuts? Really? You think this is gonna hurt your parents? Okay, we'll go right ahead. We're gonna see who, who it's gonna hurt more than your parents. Well, this is my chance to get back. Okay, yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, free will, self will run right. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've just, I've seen it all. Hell, I've done it all thinking I was hurting somebody. Like, I don't give a fuck. I, I'm, I don't want responsibility. I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do that. Okay, well, guess what? Everybody, everybody has a responsibility. I don't even care if you live in a tent, if you live on, a, on the sidewalk in a cardboard box, everybody has responsibility. Uh, these tents are out. I advise no woman to get a tent. Fuck that. Get you a canopy where you can see all four angles because with the way Tents are being cut into, women are being raped, women are being <sighs> women are just being just fucked over, just taken so much advantage of, and it's like they feel like that's the way it's supposed to be, or they don't feel enough self worthiness to to not tolerate it. They feel like they have to accept it. A lot of people accept a lot of shit down here and they don't have to accept it. But at the end of the day, Skid Row is gonna make you accept it. There's parts of it you can accept and there's parts that you have no choice but to accept. Uh, when you're a woman, if you don't really have if you're not strong-minded, if you're not a strong individual, period, I feel sorry for you. All I can do is pray for you. Uh, all I can do is advise you to, to get up out of here. This is not where you want to be, especially if you could see the damage, the, what it's, how it just tears a person down, mind, body, and soul. It's just... It's, it's just horrible. And today, you would think it's gotten better. It's gotten worse. Women are being raped in their tents in broad daylight. Women are being beat, out, beat up outside, smacked around in broad daylight on Skid Row. And nobody really wants to reach out because it's the life you live. Nobody knows what you've done to deserve it. Nobody knows... Uh, Nobody really gets involved. And the cops do nothing. And the cops do nothing. The law, that's out. If, you're, if they're not called, if there's not a report, they're not called, they could be passing by and they see nothing. Unless 
they feel that they're going to get brownie points. Like, okay, this is a drug deal going bad. We're going to get lots of guns, lots of dope, because these fucking idiots, right? You know, other than that, they don't give a flying fuck. They really don't. Guys could be out uh, stumping on, a, on, a, on another guy. Police got nothing to do with it. Once again, the code is if they're not called, they do nothing. You would think that's probable cause, right? The fuck? What the fuck is probable cause today? That's out. They see some shit. That's probable cause. Here you got them pulling people over. What's the probable cause? They can't even tell you a fucking fender light or, or the license plates or, or tags just because they're assuming, you know? And then all that, all that goes bad. But probable cause, you actually see this going on. You would think that's actually probable cause. Their meaning of probable cause, I no longer even know what, what the fuck that means. It's like, is green light really green light? Should I move <laughs> or should I stay? Does it really mean green as in far as go? I mean, you get people that are having seizures or whatever. You think the fire department is only up the street. You think they're gonna get here quick? Nah, it takes them about maybe I'll say 20 to 30 minutes. You know why? Well, what did they use? Uh, what have they, do they drink? Uh, something triggered the seizure. It's just so much judgment, so much Oh, chaos. I mean, so much bullshit, just fucked up shit. I've seen people that pass on that still should be here today based upon they could have been saved. They could have made it. Whew. You want to talk about addict babies? I believe it all starts right here in Skid Row. You have so many older. You got so many I like to call them breeders <laughs> to where it's like they spit babies out like, damn, I thought you had to go nine months, you know, term. You see them pregnant, see them spit it out, and then they're knocked right back up. It's like, damn, I didn't know a woman. A woman's body is really fascinating. It can really do shit like that. I thought it needed time to heal. <laughs> Man. Uh, and do you think the law intervenes? You would think that's all right to see a pregnant woman purchasing drugs or smoking drugs in broad daylight. You would think that gives the cops probable cause to take her ass in and it's like, they see nothing. They see nothing. They don't care. They don't give a fuck. It's like, uh, once again, if they're not called or even if they're called and you call and say she's all okay, so it's like they'll come and uh, they might say, uh, let, let, me, let me have a paramedic check you out. That's if they even give a fuck, you know? That's if they even give a fuck. Nine times out of 10, they don't. They don't. Um, I don't wanna say it on a racist tip. I'm not even gonna go there because all likes of colors are down here. So there is no color line when it comes up to being fucked over or fucked around in Skid Row. You got young black girls traveling at the Union Station, young Koreans, Asians. And today, that's all you see down here in Skid Row is the youth. You got more youth down here that's beat up and tore up. They look like they're 80, 90 years old because of what Skid Row has done to them, what drugs have done to them, what being abused has done to them. I mean, Skid Row is just... <laughs> I mean, if you're with the bullshit and you don't want responsibility and you bottom line, if you just don't give a fuck about the way you live, then hey, Skid Row is the place for you. What it's Sin City. It's murderers, killers, uh, prostitutes, drugs, corrupt, corruption. Every, every, everything's just fucked up there. And it's a network. It's a network. It's a business. It's a it's a billion, trillion dollar business, especially if you're networking, meaning if you're a dealer and you're with the cops or you're with some of the agencies uh, supplying drugs for some of the agents. I mean, it's just a one big free for all. I mean, 
it's it's sin candy fucking land. I mean, it's just uh, anything fucked up that you want to do, you can do it right here freely in Skid Row. There are consequences, but at the end of the day, nobody gives a fuck about consequences. This is Skid Row. Thank you.